This is the business of architecture. Helping architects conquer the world. And here's your host, Enoch Sears. Hello, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the show where we talk with successful architects, designers, and consultants to discuss tips, strategies, and secrets for running a profitable and an impactful architecture practice. This episode is sponsored by BQE Software. They're the makers of Archi Office. Archi Office is the project and office management software built with architects in mind. For a limited time, you can snag two seats of the software free for a full year if you're a startup firm. You can find out the details of that over at archioffice.com. Now, today's show is going to be a little different than most. I'm reaching into the Business of Architecture vault and pulling out a few of the interviews that I've never broadcast before. Today, you'll hear from AIA CEO Robert Ivey, University of Illinois professor, BIM expert, and Twitter maven and personal friend Randy Deutsch, Architecture for Humanity co-founder Cameron Sinclair, as well as architect and social media expert Jeff Eccles. These interviews, I recorded them live in person at the AI convention in 2013 in Denver, Colorado. Now, there is a little bit of background noise. I apologize for that because it was on location recording, but hopefully it isn't too distracting and it doesn't take away from the great content of these interviews. Before we jump into those, I just want to give a shout out to Brian who recently sent me some feedback that I wanted to read out. He writes, What's been piquing my interest of late is hearing stories of how other companies operate, their culture, their hiring process, why they fail or succeed, how the leaders lead, and so on. He mentions that in the business section of the New York Times is a column called The Corner Office, where they interview leaders of various companies. They ask the same questions each week, but the responses are always different. Thank you, Brian, for that tip. I checked it out, and that's definitely a resource I'll be keeping tabs on. Uh, Go check that out. They share stories about ethics and techniques. And, uh, you know, Brian was just saying, look, there's a lot of things outside of our industry that we could apply to our industry. And he, he continues, what's interesting is that I never used to be concerned about the business side of architecture. Then what feels like suddenly I became very interested in the business of architecture. I'm not sure why it happened when it did or where it will lead me, but I'm diving in and seeing what happens. Well, welcome to the club, Brian, and hopefully you're on your way to fame and riches and satisfaction and contentment in the world of architecture. Also, I want to give a shout out to our a new listener, Jacob Clark, and he writes, I see there's a need to, for big changes in the way architecture is done, and the way I can help shift the paradigm is not accepting the things just because that's the way they are. In order to be ahead of the curve and as far ahead of my classmates as I can, I decided that I needed to look for new information in new places. I turned online and that's where I found your site. I plan on running my own firm one day sooner rather than later, so I wanted to seek out the best help I can from the resources I can find. So Jacob, welcome once again to the club and congratulations on looking at the business side of things early. It's really going to give you an advantage. As I always like to say, this is what they don't teach us in architecture school, but it really is an integral part and parcel of being a successful architect. Now, I was thinking about spicing up this show with some listener questions. So if you have a question that you'd like me to answer on the show or talk about, please send those into support at businessofarchitecture.com. In the subject line, put the word question, and we'll read out those out over the air. I'm curious to know if you guys have any questions, and we'll see if that becomes part of the format of the show. Now, let's dive into today's show. First, we're going to hear from AI CEO Robert Ivey on the tools that the AI offers small firm practitioners. Then, Randy Deutsch is going to tell us about his experience using social media, especially Twitter. Cameron Sinclair, the co-founder of Architecture for Humanity, is going to speak on using pro bono work as a business development strategy. And architect Jeff Eccles will round it out by talking about social media. So with that, here's Robert Ivey from the AI convention in 2013. I'm Robert Ivey, and uh, I'm the CEO of the American Institute of Architects. I'm an architect, and I had a small practice myself. I'm very in tune with that whole notion. Uh, But it's hard. And so there's several resources that are at the AI that you don't have just out in practice by yourself. One, we've got a gathering of small firms. It's called the Small Firm Roundtable. They meet regularly, and they're addressing issues that are unique to the small firm practice. And small firms need to be able to get together and talk to each other in a non-competitive environment and figure out what needs to be done. That's number one. Number two, 
we're just publishing this great document called the Foresight Report. And it's a trends document. And if I had been back in private practice, I couldn't have afforded it. Design Intelligence, Jim Cramer's group, has provided this document and tells you what to do in your practice, what to look for, what the trends are, and how to succeed. And I think it's going to give a small firm a leg up. For AIA members, it's free. It's a value of your membership. We just introduced it two days ago. It's online, free for members. And what suggestions would you have for sole practitioners that want to make the most of something like the small firm roundtable? Uh, well, you know, it's uh, basically, you, it's free to join. And, and I mean, there are representatives to this group who, I guess, hash out the big issues. But you can just join the small firm roundtable. There's yeah. no... Uh, there's no limit to, uh, you know. And what, what benefits would a small practitioner find in a group like that from your experience? Well, number one is uh, people who are in the same position you are. You need to know, you need to have a friend who's dealing with, you know, what are the, can you afford BIM right now or not? How many other small firms are facing that same issue? What are they hearing out in the marketplace about it? If they did buy it, it, what's the benefit ratio for doing so? Uh, is it worth going for a government contract or not? Is it too hard right now? All those sort of real world issues. And I would think ultimately that group is going to address how to raise the value of architecture too so that, you know, that your uh, prosperity level will rise. All right, that concludes my interview with Robert Ivey. Now we're going to jump into an interview with Rene Deutsch, where he's going to talk to us about how to get the most out of Twitter and his experience using that platform as an educator, blogger, and architect. I'm Randy Deutsch. That's my handle on Twitter. I'm an architect in Chicago, but I'm also a, uh, have a consultancy. I'm a professor and a book author and blogger and spend too much time on Twitter. So, Randy, where do you teach at? I teach at University of Illinois, Champaign-Urbana. I, I teach um, building science to the entire sophomore class. Um, I teach uh, undergrad design studio, professional practice, and a grad seminar. Okay. So tell me what you've learned from Twitter, because you're pretty involved in Twitter. I'm one of those people that's really motivated by learning, and I find that I get a lot of enjoyment about being on Twitter. Because there's a great deal to learn just socially, but also just in terms of content and information. Not so much the news, what's going on, there's other sources for that. Um, but I love getting people's opinions. Um, and I also like sharing information as well. I found it to be a really remarkable place to share things in a way that, um, you know, if you imagine being on a street corner and handing out pamphlets, nobody takes one. Everyone seems to take it on Twitter. I don't know what that's about. But it's a great place. It's because you give good stuff. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> what, have a, been, what have been some places where you find good content to share? Um, I think it's not so much the location or a single source. Um, I think um, the, the overall idea is make sure there's a constant stream of information coming to you, ideally through email. So just for example, what are some of your three or four favorite topics? Put it into Google Alerts. You wake up at 5, 6 in the morning. They're waiting for you take a real quick glance, you don't have to spend a lot of time, and uh, a couple great articles um, or pieces of information will pop out at you, and you know the people who are following you, you know the people that you interact with online, and you, after a while you just know, wow, this is something that these three or four people will like. And when they share it, then you suddenly realize three or four hundred are sharing with each other. Yeah. And what are the benefits that you've seen from Twitter? How has it impacted your life? Positively? It's it's impacted it, my life uh, so positively in so many different ways. I, I wouldn't even know where to begin. But just for starters, um, I've met some uh, really remarkable people online. Um, you know, Enoch, we've met. You know, through Twitter, just starting right there. Um, but also um, people that I've ended up consulting with. Somebody maybe will recognize what some of my interests are. Um, for example, if you're on LinkedIn with that, um, them, they may only have sort of a two-dimensional view of what you're all about. Uh, if they're on Facebook, they're two-dimensional, but it's a different side of you. Twitter seems to sort of address the personal side and the professional side. It seems to uh, look at all facets. And so for that reason, I am finding that um, uh, people have asked me to do consulting with them through Twitter, um, do some projects with them on the side, help find them a job, um, you know, uh, help people do that. Um, uh, find some resources that they're looking for, uh, bring two people together in a very different way than you would do on LinkedIn. I found on Twitter I'm able to do that. 
Um, so it goes on and on from there, but I think there are many, many benefits. Okay, and what has surprised you about Twitter is you've gotten to use it more and you've understood the power of Twitter and how you're able to connect. What's really surprised you about the way that Twitter adds value to your life? I would have to say that uh, Twitter has its own unspoken law of logic and um, it's there for you to, maybe there are books on this, I don't know, I've never read them, but you can kind of figure out after a while that getting a lot of followers is great. But, um, for example, um, I have a number of people, as many as 50 a week, that unfollow me. They just think I'm sharing way too much information. But as long as you have more than 50 follow you every week, over a period of time, you will get eventually a lot of follows. So one of the first things you realize is that you're not looking for immediate gratification from Twitter. It's whatever you put out there, it's not gonna come back to you within a day or two. There's a certain uh, economy in Chicago, I'm from Chicago, um, that has taught me a great deal that I think has helped me understand Twitter. Uh, so Chicago has a favor economy. You do a favor for someone and then you forget about it. And maybe a year or two later, something magical, wonderful happens. And chances are you could probably at that point connect the dots. But you never know what those dots are going to be. And so I think Twitter's like Chicago in that sense, that uh, you put a lot of stuff out there, a lot of great things come back, but there's no direct correlation. I think a lot of people get very frustrated, they get on Twitter, they put something out there, they don't get the immediate response or gratification or followers and, uh, or money or prizes, whatever it happens to be, and they give up on it. But I think if you stick with it, a lot of great things come from it. Great, thank you. And you have a book on BIM, so architects that want to know more about what BIM's all about, where do they go to find your book? They can find my book if you're here at the AIA convention right now. This is live um, at the AIA bookstore. But if it's not, um, you can find it on Amazon. That's what I'd recommend. What's um, the title? And what? BIM, B-I-M, Building Information Modeling and Integrated Design by Randy Deutsch. Okay, that concludes my interview with Randy Deutsch. Next up, we're going to hear from Architecture of Humanity co-founder Cameron Sinclair. He was the keynote address at the AI convention in 2013, and I just had the great luck to cross paths with him and get his ideas about using pro bono work for business development, and he had some other things that will probably inspire you and may give you some ideas in your practice. So here's Cameron Sinclair. <laughs> well, Cameron, first of all, it's good to talk to you. And the question I had is, um, you're really exemplifying um, getting in the community, and connecting with people and making things happen in an entrepreneurial way. What suggestions and things have you learned from doing these sort of collaborative projects that small practitioners could apply about connecting in their communities? You know, I actually think that for small firms and small practitioners have a better shot at finding ways to work within communities. Because you work in a very tangible way, you actually have time to really meet with the clients. And as long as you treat communities as a client with the kind of respect and dignity, there is an unending amount of work. What you begin to find is once you provide pro bono services to those in need, those who aren't in need will seek you out. It's actually an incredible business model to say, you know what, I'm an architect that cares about everyone and that we can give back when we need to. And you, know, and you end up working with nicer clients. And I think like an architect that gets funded with nice clients is the best architect you can be. Yeah. What have you learned about spreading the message of architecture humanity for humanity that could be applied to sole practitioners? You know, the other thing is realizing that we have to get in front of the right people. Which is very rare for me to speak at an architecture conference. I speak at business conferences, political events. You know, I go out and I kind of work within the community and I don't talk about how architecture for humanity can make a difference. I talk about how architecture can make a difference. And that we collectively are, we are all working together to create a better planet. And as long as we have that unified message, you know, you know, we are advocating for each other. So I think that's the best way for us to show the, the true power of design. Okay, and how can architects get involved in architecture for humanity? Oh, it's really easy. Um, you know, we actually hire architects for jobs. So if you come on our website, we're always looking for architects. Uh, we pay a small stipend. Um, we also have a one-year fellowship. We'll put you out in the field. Um, or if you just want to volunteer a little bit of time, there's always city chapters. So if you put in like your name of the city, dot architecturehumanity.org, you should find something to do locally. And if you don't find your city, then you need to start a chapter. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Cameron Sinclair. He truly is an inspiring guy to talk to. I was really glad to be able to catch up with him at the AI convention. And it is interesting to hear what he says about how pro bono work and 
providing services to underserved communities actually can have the dual benefit of helping to grow your practice and make a larger impact. Here's Jeff Eccles on some thoughts about how you can use social media as an architect to leverage more success, make more connections, and conquer the world. So I'm joined here with Jeff Eccles at Renovati on Twitter. And Jeff, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are. Uh, I'm Jeff. Uh, I uh, work for 110 Studio Architects and Construction Managers in Indianapolis. So that's my day job. Uh, Part of that involves running social media not only for 110 Studio, but also for uh, some national campaigns and also on my volunteer work uh, for local uh, community organizations. So we get a little bit of social media, a little bit of architecture, a little bit of construction management. And uh, that pretty much fills up the day. Do you think that social media is a useful investment for your firm? And if so, why? Absolutely. Uh, We are a relationship-based organization. Uh, All of our marketing is relationship-based. Uh, everything, every client that comes in the door is a friend of a friend or a, or a referral from a past client or something like that. And social media is one part of how we build those relationships, how we meet people, um, how we talk about. We, we talk more about what our clients are doing. We, we prefer not to talk much about ourselves, uh, not to boast and, and things like that. But, uh, but that's how we, uh, we get the message out about uh, what's, what's going on in our community and, and with our work. Okay. And you also share information for social media, about social media for architects. Where can they go to find more about that? I do. I do. Uh, Architectoftheinternet.com is a site that I just started where I'll be sharing information basically about my journey, what I'm learning and what I can share with other architects. It's one thing that I realize is that a lot of architects are well-versed in social media, and I think I might be able to help out in some small part there at uh, architectoftheinternet.com. Okay. And how do people connect with you, Jeff? They can connect with me on Twitter, at Renovati. Uh, they can find me on Facebook, Jeff, at C-C-H-O-L-S, or on LinkedIn. Um, you can find me at all those places. Same picture everywhere. Just look for a smiley face. And that's a wrap for another show about the business of architecture. To get more resources about how you, as an architect, can run a rewarding business that is both fun, flexible, and profitable, visit businessofarchitecture.com and click the Join button to claim your free account to Business of Architecture Insider. As a member, you'll have access to free tools and resources to help you get more clients, start a new firm, and much more. You'll also get access to my book, Social Media for Architects, where you'll learn how to use Internet tools for fun and for profit. Until next week, this has been The Business of Architecture. Views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Bump music credit to Ben Folds 5, Do It Anyway.